Hi, boys and girls. This is Grandma Sheila, and I have another story for you tonight. This story is called, There is a God. In 1894, Helen and her parents lived in Jamaica, and they were missionaries. They, they had been there for years telling the people about Jesus. But they were both, they weren't in very good health. And so they had been told that they needed to move to a country or another place that wasn't so hot. So they went down to the harbor and they contracted to ride in a sailing ship to the United States to a port in the state of Mississippi. Well, they got all their things together and they got them on that boat and everything was going wonderful. They, they started out on their journey, but it wasn't long till their journey wasn't what they expected. Matter of fact, out of nowhere came a huge storm and this wasn't a really big sailing ship. And I mean, the waves were huge. They were just rolling and rolling. And it was bad. Everybody was seasick. They didn't know if they were going to even survive this terrible storm. And it seemed like it went on forever, but in reality, it didn't. And then one day, it was gone. It, it was just like somebody had turned it off. Well, then something else happened, as if the storm wasn't bad enough. What happened then was that day when the storm stopped, all the wind stopped with it, all of it. And the sailboat that they were on in those days, didn't have another mechanism to, to make it go. So when the waves smoothed off and the wind stopped blowing, there they sat in the very middle of the ocean. Look at that. I mean, this, you can see that you can see the coastline but they were as far out as you could get in the middle of the ocean. And there they sat. Well, the really unfortunate thing was that the people that ran this boat, the captain, he thought that they were only going to be on the ocean for a short period of time. But now, that there was no wind to make that boat go. They, all they could do was sit there. And every day, there was less and less and less food and water. Finally, it was so bad that the captain gathered all the people on that boat together. And he said, we've made a decision. We're going to ration food and water, and everybody is going to get a half a pint of water for 24 hours and a half of a sea biscuit to eat in 24 hours. That was a tiny, tiny amount of food, and it was a tiny, tiny amount of water and the sun, now that that storm was gone, the sun just beat down on them and they were so hot. And the hotter they got, the thirstier they got. Well, some of the people, when the captain gave out that little bitty container of water every morning, some of them would just gulp it down. And then they didn't have any for the rest of the day. And they'd do the same thing with their sea biscuit. They would eat it up, and then they had no food to eat the rest of the day. Well, other people 
when they got their little cup of water, they rationed it out through the day. They would take one tiny little sip of water. That's all they would allow themselves. And they would try to make that little bit of water go through the whole day. They do the same thing with that little biscuit, one little bite. Well, there were other people that when they were given their little cup of water and that one sea biscuit, they would gather it to themselves and they would look around and they were very suspicious. They thought, is somebody gonna steal it from us? And unfortunately, there were some mean people on that boat. And when you're in the middle of the ocean, you can't even get away from them. And they would, when they thought nobody in authority was looking, they would go to people and they would grab their cup of water or they would grab their sea biscuit and they would gobble it down. Well, it was getting bad on the boat. But in fact, it was so bad that Helen one day, out of her suitcase, she took out a pair of kid gloves, gloves that were made out of leather. And she started chewing on them, thinking that maybe she could get a little bit of nourishment out of them. It didn't help. They didn't know what to do. And weeks went by, no wind, no wind. They were praying. And occasionally they would see way off in the distance, way back here, far, far away. They would see ships, but they were so far away and they were so droopy from no food and no water that they couldn't even stand up and yell or wave. And the ships would just go on as if they weren't even there. It was terrible. Then one day, the captain made a terrible announcement. He said, we are putting everybody's name into a bucket. And tonight, when it's nighttime, we are going to pull so many names out of that bucket. And whoever's name is pulled out tomorrow, after we make sure there's no boats out there, on the edge of the ocean, we're going to throw the people whose names were on those pieces of paper overboard so there'll be more water and food for the people that are still here. The people will go, any of us, any of us, our name could be pulled and we could be thrown out into those waves. What a horrible thing. That night, mother, she and Helen slept down in the bottom of the boat in their little cabin. And dad, he had to sleep up on the deck. She told Helen, she said, I'm going to do something tonight. I'm going to pray all night long that God will some way send help. Have you ever thought that maybe praying for something that was very important to you would make a difference? I think it would make a difference. And she prayed all night. And when morning came, her head fell back on the pillow on her bed and she went to sleep. She had been asleep what seemed like not very long when the dad came running in that little cabin and he said, Mother, wake up, wake up. 
There, we, we see a boat. We see a boat. And she, oh, she was so tired. She said, we're always seeing a boat. They never see us. It'll just go away over the horizon like every other boat. And then she was awake enough. She realized what she'd said. And she went, oh, no, I prayed all night long. Maybe it's the answer to our prayers. Oh, oh, let's go see. So they quickly got dressed and they went upstairs upstairs. Well, there was a stairs, but they went up the stairs to the deck of the boat. And there, all the people were standing along the railing on one side of that sailing boat. And they were looking intently out to sea. Nobody said anything, though. And there was one man with a spyglass. And he was looking, looking, and he said, I see it, I see it. And everybody took turns looking, and sure enough, they could see it. And one man said, it's coming toward us. It's coming straight toward us. And sure enough, by this day, the people couldn't even, they could hardly raise their hands alone to wave and try to flag down a boat. They just stood there quietly and watched. And that boat got closer and closer and closer. And pretty soon, it bumped exactly against the side of that sailing boat. And it was a little steamer. Now, I need to tell you about those. In those days, in the 1800s, they hired the little steamboats and they would go out. They had a certain amount of miles that they could go out into the, into the ocean and they would look for sailing boats and they would guide them or pull them like in this case, their boat wasn't going anywhere, but they would pull them into the harbor. But there was that rule, you could only go so far out into the ocean if you didn't see a boat. Well, when the captain and three other men got out of that little steamer and came up on the deck of the boat, he looked at all those bedraggled people and he said, there is a God, there is a God. Well, then he told him of his experience. Now, he had been a seagoing captain all his life and he was never, ever, ever seasick. Well, one day, on his little steamer, he had gotten up and he had the, the biggest impression that there was a boat out there that needed help. So he told his crew, he said, we're going out into the ocean today. And so they were used to going out after boats and they thought that the captain knew about some boat that needed their help. So they took their steamer and they went and finally they came to that part in the ocean. They were the right amount of miles out when they couldn't, by law, go any further. And if they went beyond that and the government found out about it, they had to pay big fines. But the captain... The captain said, keep going, keep going, go. So they did. They went and they went and they went. And finally, the men 
got upset with the, the captain. They said, there's something wrong with you. We need to go home. Now we need to go home. The captain said, please, just a little further, please. He didn't know what he was looking for, so he couldn't tell them. But then something really unusual happened to the captain. All of a sudden, he got really seasick, and he ran to the rail, and he started throwing up over the side of the rail. And everybody looked at him. They'd never seen the captain sick. And he got sicker and sicker and sicker, and they had to put him to bed. Well, they had kept going like he had said. But finally, one morning, they came and they said, we can't do this any longer. And he sat up in his bed and he said, we'll go back if there's nothing out there tomorrow morning. And he laid back down on his bed. Well, when morning came, suddenly, suddenly the sickness left him. And he went up on the deck and the man with the spyglass, he said, I see a boat. And the captain said, well, go straight to it. Go to it right now. And so they headed right off to that boat. And that's how they found that little sailing boat with all those people on it. And you know what? The captain was standing on the sailing boat and they were getting ready to tow it into the dock. He said, Was somebody praying? And they said, oh yes. And especially the missionary's wife, she prayed all night long last night, all night. She didn't stop. And the captain said, well, that God that's alive and real, He's a God that listens to prayers and he answers them. You know, the captain was right. They pulled that sailing boat to the United States, into that dock in Mississippi. Well, they actually ended up in the town of New Orleans. They had been out there for over a month. And even with the rationing and all those things, God had taken care of them. Do you know you have a God that listens to you and answers? Your God is alive just as much today as he was in 1894. Thank you for listening. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.